Okay, I want to talk to all you scientists that know about the Debug Fresno project. What that entails is the release of 20 million Wolbachia infected 80s male mosquitoes. And those of you who are in the medical entomology field know or should know that Culex are also found to be Zika vectors. In fact, three species of Culex were found to be Zika vectors in Mexico, including Culex tarsalis. Now, Culex tarsalis bites overnight. It starts in the evening and, and, and likes to bite overnight. So the most vulnerable people are going to be the homeless and people who can't afford to put screens or repaired screens on their windows. And my data has already shown that men are like a canary in a coal mine. I want to show you the top 20 cities where I get visits, organic visits to an, uh, an article I don't even promote and it's an article about Zika in men and how it affects men. A lot of the studies about this are behind paywalls and the media is not even covering it because for some reason it's only pregnant women that are told to worry about Zika. Well, we have a huge ethics problem right now in the scientific community. And here's the deal. Over almost half of bulbuls tested by Okia et al. in 1971 had Zika. And Zika is more related to West Nile virus and St. Louis encephalitis viruses uh, than dengue and yellow fever and chikungunya and all these other ones that everybody's lumping them into. And what I have discovered is that Wolbachia is probably the cofactor here driving Culex to be better vectors of Zika. In fact, Culex were found to be better vectors of West Nile virus when they were infected by, naturally infected by Wolbachia. And the same thing happened with malaria. And now malaria is not related to Zika. But what I'm trying to show you is that Wolbachia has a Jekyll and Hyde relationship with different mosquito species. Now it would be fine and dandy if all we had to worry about were Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. Then perhaps we could try out the Wolbachia infected Aedes 
experiments that are going on. But these experiments can never be taken back. Wolbachia is maternally inherited. It's going to be in the eggs and in the larvae. And there are species of birds and aquatic species like copods that feed preferentially on the Aedes genus. Aedes normally doesn't have Wolbachia. So now it's like we're creating a whole new species. So I'm calling upon the entire scientific community, especially worldwide, because it appears that the American scientific community seems to be funded predominantly by Bill and Melinda Gates, who are heavily invested, as well as the U.S. government, in Wolbachia infected mosquito releases. Now, I was the only one of, I think, 22 or 24 uh, comments that were opposed to Wolbachia infected mosquito releases on the FDA docket. So the, for some odd reason, the FDA is not even involved. Now, Wolbachia is a maternally transmitted, uh, inherited, sorry, inherited bacteria that's double-walled, and I believe Zika's acting like a bacterial phage, protected within this double wall and taking a ride to the gonads, heart, and optic nerve. And it's funny that we're finding out azithromycin and nanchangmycin, which is... Uh, useful in um, treating people who have nematode worm infections and those worms emit Wolbachia, it's actually protecting fetal brain cells. And what that tells me is that the Wolbachia surface proteins are uh, being affected with Zika. It's somehow working in tandem, but we need to prove that. My guess is that red whiskered and red vented bulbuls need to be tested for Zika because they're the most likely amplifying host. 
in West Nile, with West Nile virus, which is very much related to Zika, even though you're only told yellow fever and dengue and maybe chikungunya, Zika is like West Nile with a side of Wolbachia thrown in. This is uh, just a glaring, obvious scientific fact that has been ignored by countless sources. And um, what I want to say is this. 20 million Wolbachia infected 80s males are going to be released in Fresno County, throughout Fresno County. And wind currents in California and also uh, ocean currents are predominantly southbound. So this is going to blow into LA County and, and surrounding areas. Well, guess what? This year, the homeless rate in LA County is up 23%. And we have an estimated 58,000 people that are homeless, and that includes women and children. And there are workers that work overnight. And there are literally millions of people that are just being told daytime biters, daytime active. And they're only talking about 80s, Aegypti, or Albopictus. And I've seen this in literature, public health authorities, CDC. I've seen this numerous places. Well, you've been lied to. And it would be willfully negligent to not be testing Culex as a Zika vector and not be testing at least bulbuls, red whiskered and red vented bulbuls. And wouldn't you know it, Miami Dade, uh, Florida has an established uh, colony there of red whiskered bulbuls. Houston Heights, which has the highest rate. Uh, Harris County has the highest rate of Zika. Well, they have red vented bulbs there established. And wouldn't you know it, in Los Angeles, there is uh, red whiskered bulbs that are established. And if the scientific community and the CDC and WHO keep ignoring this data, we are going to see literally thousands of people that work overnight and homeless people that just end up with the worst manifestations like Guillain-Barre syndrome, they stop breathing. We're going to find a lot of very sick uh, people that die young and it's, uh, it's going to be a tragedy on all of us. So everybody knows someone. I'm calling upon the entire scientific community to start speaking up. Kulik's need to be investigated everywhere. It'd be foolish to think they're going to stop at the Mexican border. There's three species. And these red whiskered and red vented bulbs need to be tested, bled and tested, because a bird can amplify a, a virus a billion times more than a human. So you know what happened to the gent in Utah? He had like 100,000 times more virus particles in his blood. Well, he died of Zika. It was determined it was Zika. It wasn't some other... Uh, illness that was alongside of it that caused it. It was Zika. Well, this is where we're headed. Now, are we going to sit back? Are we going to sit back and watch this happen?
Because if we are, we are in a lot of trouble and there are going to be a lot of emergency personnel that are picking up dead bodies. And we had better get together in the scientific community and do something about this. I am going to leave you screenshot proof of these studies. I'm not making this up. Thanks for listening.